Hello and welcome to another video from Madam Machine. My name is Shona, I'm one of the CAM experts here. Today we're going to have a look at some of these 3D tool parts. This is a question that came up on the Titans of CNC forum and I put a post on there to ask if anyone was having any issues or troubles or was unsure about certain things with any of a Fusion or HSM. One of the questions was which 3D tool parts do I use and where? It's a very good question as some of these can be confusing. So let's take a look at some of the tool paths go through their strengths, their weaknesses, and some application or use. So we'll start off at looking at this parallel. We'll start off by taking that parallel from top down view. So what this does is it generates a step over value that you've given it of toolpath in the direction you've given it. So this would be between the X and Y direction. So zero being in the Y, 90 would be in the X and anywhere between. And then takes that generates the toolpath and projects it down onto the workpiece. So as you can see, in these shallow areas or in the steeper areas in the direction of travel, the toolpath is very nice. In these steeper areas in the opposite direction of travel, then it's not very nice. You get these much larger step overs. And it's just due to the way this toolpath is generated. The step over is one mil, but that wall is vertical, so the step over does not accumulate into that shape, steeper area. There are a couple of options we can do here. We can turn on shallow, steep area machining. What this is going to do is reduce the amount of step overs between the shallow, air, the shallow and the steep areas. This is okay as long as you don't get to any more vertical walls. In these vertical walls, then you get these larger step overs. There is another option, and we can do a perpendicular toolpath. What the perpendicular toolpath does is, no matter what your travel direction is, that you've set will cut the steep areas away given a specific specified direction and then create a perpendicular path to that and give you a nicer toolpath um, that will machine the steep and the shallow areas in the direction of travel. Um, it does give you these cut off areas on the corners, there's a lot of lifts and a lot of moving around to get to do it, but it will do the toolpath. It will give you a nice toolpath at the end that will probably need um, hand finishing but we'll give you the finished part you want. Next we'll look at contour. With contour, contour works very similar to parallel but instead of doing it in the X to Y direction it does it in the Z direction. So whichever your Z direction is going to slice it up and add um, slices and projection to the part. So again this works well in the opposite to parallel, works best in the steeper areas and not so good in shallow areas. So because this shallow area is almost, almost vertical to the axes, the step over between here and here is 1 mil in the Z axis, but in the X and Y is not. We do have shallow area machining within the contour, but again, this is more designed at parts that aren't quite um, vertical. They're designed to be more shallow and steeper area, um, more steep parts. Ramp works the same way, it's generated the same way as contour. They are step downs. But instead of being a step down, like contour is single step downs all the way down, rump is constant tool engagement, so it's more like a spiral tool path, and will spiral down. Next we'll have a look at scallop, and scallop is kind of like get me out of jail free card. It's the tool path that does everything, it does shallow, it does steep. It seems perfect, and why would you use anything else? Because it still has its limitations. It takes the boundary you've drawn, finds the centre point of that boundary, and works the tool path outwards. Now this is great for these shallow areas, great for the steep areas, but when it comes into these small pockets, you now got a tool which is down cutting, going across, and then up cutting. It's fine if you've got a tool that can up cut and you have the sidewall cutting, but if you've got a bull nose which is just a bull nose cutting, cutting up this shank is going to rub the shank on it, it's going to break tools. It still has its limitations, even though it's that get me out of jail free tool path. And it does generate very nice tool paths in the right application. Now we're going to have a look at more of the pretty tool paths. And the pretty tool paths um, are tool paths that are going to give us a nice surface finish when it comes off the machine. So it's going to give us a nice looking tool path. So if you are just wanting to machine a part and have a nice finish, you're going to use something like these tool paths. So we're going to start at more spiral. What more spiral does, takes the boundary you choose, offsets it into a center point. So as you can see, these it's a square with corn rads on it, and it's projected that square all the way in until it gets to a centre point where it gives you a single line. And this is spiral as well. Now what this is good for is adding two boundaries. 
So it's now working between these two boundaries. I'm working that spiral down into this circle at the end. And that would give you quite a nice surface finish coming off the machine. It would look nice. Um, probably won't need any prep. And that's what these pretty toolpaths are for. We also have radial. What radial does is take the centre point, works between boundaries, or you can set one boundary and it will work from the centre point all the way out to the boundary. But with this part, we're going to work between the two boundaries. We're going to do a degree step over. So you're going to set a degree step over, and in this case, it's one degree. And this generates a step over path all the way around in a radial kind of view. If we look at this from the top down, we can see it's just working outwards. And again, we'll give you a nice, pretty looking part. Next is spiral. A spiral is quite good for these circular, for anything circular. So this bowl with these lips is going to give you a nice looking tool path. It works from the centre point and spirals outwards. We can spiral outwards or we can spiral inwards depending on which we choose. But it gives you a constant step over spiral in the X Y plane. Next is Morph. So what Morph does is take two boundary choices. So I've chosen this boundary and this boundary. And it wants to work between the two boundaries keeping the shape of the boundaries. So as you can see, the centre line is a centre line. It's exactly square straight. But the outside lines where the boundaries were chosen, contours were chosen, are keeping shapes. So I'm going to try and keep the shape as much as possible, which is great for a nice looking part. But as you can see in these, um, in the centre area here where it's more enclosed, the tool path becomes a lot more shallower step overs. And in this wider area, the tool path becomes wider. So the toolpath does vary in step over, but we'll keep the shape and give you a nice looking part. Last but not least, for finishing, we have pencil finishing as well. And this is a toolpath which is going to allow you to finish the corner radiuses in your, in, on your parts. So if I've, say, machined this with an 8mm ball nose, just to have a nice stronger ball nose to finish with, and then I want to go back in and finish the corners, I can go back in with my 6mm ball nose to get those nice 3mm rads. Use pencil, I can either do single line or I can do multiple step overs, I can do just shallow or just steep areas. It gives you that freedom to go and finish your part and finish those radiuses in the corner. And last but not least, we have project. So, what project does is it takes a 2D sketch and projects it down onto 3D geometry. And this can be quite good for adding text to parts or part scribes, but it also always machines in just the Z axes. So, the tool is just going to come down and Z and machine this part. Realistically, that's all there really is to 3D machining. And as I said at the beginning, there's no real definition to what you should use where. You should only be looking at the limitations of the toolpath and what the toolpath can and cannot do. And the surface finish you want out of it. So I hope that helps. Um, if you'd like any further details or would like a more in-depth demo, please contact us at Man and Machine. I'll leave our contact details at the end of this video. It will also be in the description below. Thank you for watching.